Hi guys, welcome to my study compass. In this video, I'll be walking you through the past paper, Math B1, Variant 1, October November 2021. Let's get started. Complete the table. We can easily convert 0.25 into a fraction by typing it into the calculator. This gives us 1 over 4. To convert 0.25 to a percentage, we multiply by 100. This gives us 25. When we type 1 over 5 into the calculator, we get the decimal form to be 0.2. This shape is drawn on a 1 cm squared grid. Find the perimeter of the shape. The perimeter is the distance around the shape. So in this case, when we sum up the distance around the shape, we get 24 cm. Write down the order of rotational symmetry of this shape. The order of rotational symmetry is simply the number of times the shape looks exactly like the original in one complete rotation. When we rotate the shape 180 degrees, it looks exactly like the original and when we rotate it 360 degrees, we come back to its original shape. And so the order of rotational symmetry is 2. Write down the letter of the shape that is congruent to the shaded shape. The shape congruent to the shaded shape must have the exact same size as the shaded shape. From the shapes, we see that shape E has the exact same size as the shaded shape. The number of items that each of 22 people buy in a supermarket is shown in the stem and leaf diagram. Find the mode. The mode is the most recurring number. From the stem and leaf plot, this number is 22. Find the median. The stem and leaf plot is already arranged in ascending order. And so to get the location of the median, we find half of n plus 1, where n in this case is 22. This gives us 11.5. This means the median is located between the 11th number and the 12th number. The 11th number is 29 and the 12th number is 31. And so the median will be 29 plus 31 divided by 2, which is equal to 30. Change 2.7 kilometers into meters. 1 kilometer is 1000 meters. So to convert 2.7 kilometers to meters, we multiply 2.7 by 1000. This gives us 2700 meters. Find the number of hours in 5 days. In 1 day, there are 24 hours. So to convert 5 days to hours, we multiply 5 by 24. This gives us 120 hours. Hank flies from Los Angeles to Shanghai. The flight departs on Friday, 22nd July at 21.40. The flight takes 13 hours, 35 minutes. The local time in Shanghai is 15 hours ahead of the local time in Los Angeles. Find the day, date and time in Shanghai when Hank's flight arrives. To get the time the flight arrives in Shanghai, we add the time duration for the flight, which is 13 hours, 35 minutes, to the departure time, which is 21.40. Under the minutes column, 40 plus 35 is 75. 60 minutes is 1 hour, so we add 1 hour to the hour column and leave the remaining 15 minutes under the minutes column. Under the hour column, 1 plus 21 plus 13 is 35. 24 hours is 1 day. So we add 1 to the day column and leave the remaining 11 hours under the hour column. Under the day column, 1 plus 0 plus 0 is 1. Our result here means the flight arrives in Shanghai the next day, which is 
Saturday, 23rd July at 11.15. This is the local time in Los Angeles, so we need to add an additional 15 hours to our results to get the equivalent local time in Shanghai. Under the minute column, 15 plus 0 is 15. Under the hour column, 11 plus 15 is 26. 24 hours is one day, so we add 1 to the day column and leave the remaining 2 hours under the hour column. Under the day column, 1 plus 1 is 2. Our result here means the local time in Shanghai is one day ahead of the local time in Los Angeles. And so the date and time in Shanghai is Sunday 24th July 2.15. The cost of the flight is $920. The exchange rate is $1 equals 6.87 Chinese Yuan. Find the cost of the flight in Yuan. First, we set up the conversion ratio. From here, when we cross multiply and make x the subject, this is what we have. When we type this into the calculator, we get 6320.40 yuan rounded to two decimal places. P equals 2n minus 3t. Find the value of n when p equals 9 and t equals 8. When we plug in p equals 9 and t equals 8 into the given equation, this is what we have. 3 times 8 is 24. When we group like terms, we have 2n equals 33. When we divide both sides by 2, we get n equals 16.5. The scale drawing shows the positions of two towns, P and Q. The scale is 1 cm, represents 4 km. Find the actual distance between town P and town Q. First, we measure the distance between P and Q on the map. This gives us 8.2 cm. So now to get the actual distance, we set up the conversion ratio based on the scale we've been given. From here, when we cross multiply and make x the subject, we get 32.8 km. Measure the bearing of town Q from town P. Using a protractor, we measure the angle from the north of point P to Q. This gives us 65 degrees. Town X is 28 kilometers from town P on a bearing of 140 degrees. On the scale drawing, mark the position of town X. To get the equivalent of 28 kilometers on the map, we set up the conversion ratio. When we cross multiply and make x the subject, this is what we have, which is equal to 7 centimeters. So on the scale drawing, we first measure and mark an angle of 140 degrees from the north of point P. Then we pin the position of town X along this bearing such that X is 7 centimeters from point P. Chang invests $2,460 at a rate of 3.5% per year simple interest. Calculate the total amount of his investment at the end of 4 years. The total value of his investment is equal to his principal plus the total interest earned. For simple interest, we can compute the total interest using the formula principal times rate times time divided by 100. We've been given the principal to be $2,460. The rate is 3.5% and the time duration in years is 4. When we type this into the calculator, we get $2,804.40. One hundred and twenty five people taste a new drink. Each person gives a score out of five. The bar chart shows the results. Calculate the mean score. The mean is equal to sigma f of x, which represents the total sum of the scores, divided by sigma f, which is the number of scores. 
To get the sum of the scores, we multiply each score by the number of people who gave that score. So we have 0 times 4 plus 1 times 15 plus 2 times 23 plus 3 times 36 plus 4 times 19 plus 5 times 28 divided by the number of scores which is 125. When we type this into the calculator we get 3.08. Find the next term in this sequence. When we look at the given sequence, we see that the terms have a constant difference of 6. So to get the next term, we add 6 to 25. This gives us 31. Write down the term to term rule for this sequence. For this sequence, we see that the term to term rule is subtract 4. Find the nth term for this sequence. When we look at the given sequence, we see that the terms have a constant difference of 2. This is the nth term formula for sequences with a common difference. A1 is the first term and that is negative 1. D is the common difference which is 2. When we expand the brackets, 2 times n is 2n and 2 times negative 1 is negative 2. Negative 1 minus 2 is negative 3 and so the nth term is 2n minus 3. A circular disc has circumference 250 centimeters. Calculate the radius of the disc. This is the formula for the circumference of the circle. We want to find the radius, so we make R the subject. The circumference C has been given as 250 centimeters. When we type this into the calculator, we get 39.8 centimeters rounded to three significant figures. Factorize completely. 18x squared minus 12x. The terms have a common factor of 6x. When we factor that out, we are left with 3x minus 2. Expand and simplify. x plus 5 times x minus 3. First, x multiplies each of the terms in the other brackets. So x times x is x squared and x times negative 3 is negative 3x. Now, 5 multiplies each of the terms in the other brackets. So 5 times x is 5x and 5 times negative 3 is negative 15. Negative 3x plus 5x is 2x. And so our final answer is x squared plus 2x minus 15. Sophie buys 73 books for her school. Each book costs $21.95. By rounding each number correct to one significant figure, estimate the total cost of these books. The total cost of the books is equal to the number of books she buys, which is 73, times the unit cost of a book, which is $21.95. The first significant figure in 73 is 7. The number after 7, which is 3, is less than 5. So we maintain 7 and the number after 7 becomes 0. So 73 becomes 70 rounded to one significant figure. The first significant figure in $21.95 is 2. The number after 2, which is 1, is less than 5. So we maintain 2 and the numbers after 2 become 0. So $21.95 becomes $20 rounded to one significant figure. So now the estimated total cost would be 70 times $20, which is equal to $1,400. Write down whether this estimate is greater or less than the exact cost. Explain how you decide without working out the exact cost. The estimate is less than the exact cost because both values used to calculate the estimate are rounded down. 
Calculate the size of one interior angle of a regular octagon. Here is the formula for the size of an interior angle in a regular polygon, where n is the number of sides of the polygon. An octagon has 8 sides, so we plug in n equals 8 into the formula. This gives us 135 degrees. The table shows the relative frequency of the games won by a football team. The number of games lost is twice the number of games drawn. Complete the table. We've been told the number of games lost is twice the number of games won. This means if we represent the relative frequency for the number of games drawn with x, then the relative frequency for the number of games lost would be 2x. The sum of all the relative frequencies should be equal to 1. So we have 0.1 plus 2x plus x equals 1. When we group like terms and divide through the equation by 3, we get x equals 0.3. Now that we know the value for x, the relative frequency for the number of games drawn will be 0.3 and the relative frequency for the number of games lost is 2 times 0.3 which is 0.6. Without using a calculator, work out 1 5 over 6 plus 2 over 5. You must show all your working and give your answer as a mixed number in its simplest form. First, we convert 1 5 over 6 into an improper fraction. So we have 6 times 1 plus 5 which is 11 divided by 6. The LCM of 6 and 5 is 30. For 11 over 6, since we multiply 6 by 5 to get 30, we also need to multiply 11 by 5, which is equal to 55. For 2 over 5, since we multiply 5 by 6 to get 30, we also need to multiply 2 by 6, which is equal to 12. 55 plus 12 is 67. 67 over 30 is an improper fraction, so we need to convert it into a mixed fraction. 30 goes into 67 two times with a remainder of 7, which we divide by 30. Find the equation of line L. Give your answer in the form y equals mx plus c. All we need to do is Find the values of m and c, then we plug in these values back into the equation. First, let's pick two points on line L. In this case, we are using 0, 2, and 2, 8. To get the value of m, we apply the gradient formula. This gives us 8 minus 2 divided by 2 minus 0, which is equal to 3. To get the value of c, we plug in the value of m and one set of coordinates, in this case we are using 0, 2, into the equation. This gives us c equals 2. Now that we have the values of m and c, the equation of the line is y equals 3x plus 2. There are 50 families in a village. C is the set of families who own a car. B is a set of families who own a bicycle. Complete the Venn diagram. We've been told that six families own no cars and no bicycles. So we put six outside set C and B. 10 families own a car and a bicycle. So we put 10 in the intersection of C and B. 23 families own a car, so when we subtract 10 from 23, we get 13, which represents the families who own a car only. To get the number of families who own a bicycle only, we subtract the sum of 13, 10, and 6 from the total number of families, which is 50. This gives us 21. Find the number of elements in C union B. The number of families in C union B is 13 plus 10 plus 21, which is 44. The diagram shows a sector of a circle with radius 4.8 centimeters and sector angle 45 degrees. 
calculate the area of the sector. The formula for the area of a sector is theta over 360 degrees times pi r squared. In this case, theta is 45 degrees and r is 4.8 centimeters. When we type this into the calculator, we get 9.05 centimeters squared, rounded to three significant figures. Thank you for watching. I hope you found this video useful. See you in the next video. Bye guys.